And this is something that you, re you read the Gospels, you're reading a lot about the works of Jesus Christ and a lot about him healing people and changing people's lives. And this is something that it almost seems to go, you, you read it so much, it's almost like it's unnoticed. You know, I mean, it's, well, of course Jesus healed people. And when we go out and preach the gospel, you know, we, we tell people, you know, a little bit about Jesus Christ, just, you know, making sure they know who Jesus is. We explain that he's the son of God. He's God in the flesh. We explain these various things. And I usually tell people, you know, he performed a lot of miracles. He's the son of God. He was proving he was who he said he was. But I got, when I was just doing my Bible reading, kind of preparing this week, and I, I was actually listening, because I do a lot of driving, so I get a lot of Bible listening more than reading even, but I was just kind of marveling in my own mind, especially in the book of Mark. The book of Mark just starts off with Jesus pretty much just doing work. Right? You got the book of Matthew, you got the book of Luke, they go into his birth, they talk about a little more of a child, they talk about other things, but Mark is just like, Jesus is just off and just starting doing a whole bunch of work. There's a lot of the works of Jesus Christ are found in the book of Mark, a lot of his healing. Now, the reason why I'm making a point of this, just to start off with, is that Jesus Christ is not, and we know this, but Jesus Christ is not your, your average prophet or your false prophet, right? There's, you've got Muhammad, you've got the, these various you know, religious people, Buddha, whatever, all the people who have lived throughout history where religions have been formed basically around those individuals. Jesus is so far and above, you know, the impact that he had and, and, and the following is so far and above any of these other false prophets. And one of the main reasons is because of what he did to prove his ministry. There is way more proof of what Jesus Christ did. I mean, he literally was turning the world upside down when he came to this earth. And it was very, very short ministry as well. It wasn't an entire lifetime I mean, his life was cut really short. You know, I mean, it wasn't just decades of, of Jesus Christ preaching and building this great ministry. It was literally approximately, it was approximately three, three and a half years of him actively going out, getting disciples, doing the work. And what's amazing about that, what's amazing is that in that short period of time, I'm going to read for you the last verse of the book of John. One of the most profound statements. I love what it says here. I'm going to read the last two verses. The Bible reads in the last book of John, John 21, 24, This is the disciple which testifieth of these things and wrote these things. And we know that, this, that his testimony is true. This is Apostle John who was literally with Jesus Christ during his ministry. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. That is an extremely profound statement. I mean, think about that. The number of works, the number of lives that Jesus met, if he was going to tell all of the stories of, of the work that Jesus Christ did and everything that he was involved with, he says, I don't even think that the entire world can contain the books that would be written about what Jesus did. This is why, I mean, this is the proof. This is one of the main proofs we have of Jesus Christ being the Messiah, being the true God, being the true religion is, is, is the impact that he had and the proof of his ministry that he had. We read over and over and we see all these examples and what John is saying, and we're, we're going to read a lot of these through the book of Mark. And just keep that in mind, that of all of these accounts that we read, that we're barely scratching the surface of, of the impact that Jesus Christ had in people's lives and the amount of work that he literally did. We see Jesus tires, tirelessly going out, you know, getting up early, praying, you know, healing people. We're going to see many accounts of the entire city, you know, cities just coming out and bringing all of their sick out to him so he could heal all these people. And, and the, the vast amount of work that he did, it's incredible. And that's, he was able to reach so many people in such a short period of time. And this is a major proof of, you know, 2,000 years later, you know, we're in 2017, Anno Domini, you know, the year of our Lord, based, I mean, the entire calendar is based off, or our year structure is based off of one man, off of Jesus Christ. I mean, that's, that's a pretty significant impact. Amen. Now, we know there's a lot of apostate churches and things out there, but, but I mean, overall, Jesus Christ he made, he made that impact for a reason, because he was who he said he was and because he, these things really happened. I mean, if it was just a fraud, if he was just a charlatan, you know, a lot of people want to just blow these, these evidences, these truth off as if, oh yeah, he was just like a magician. He was just like this sleight of hand. 
It's nonsense. It's nonsense to buy into an argument like that. What, you cannot fake the, the vast majority of the things that we see the accounts of Jesus Christ doing in here. Amen. You can't fake bringing somebody back from the dead. I'm sorry. When all the people, they, when he wasn't even around. The guy died, he wasn't around. You have all these other witnesses around. And then Jesus Christ shows up four days later. And they're worried about him stinking because it's been so long since he died. And people who weren't even believers in Jesus, people who actually hated Jesus, were there present at that time and witnessed what happened. The witness was true. And we see the account they were trying to prevent that witness from coming out. But you can't stop it. It's too great of an event. When people who are lame from their mother's womb, blind from their mother's womb, and, and just all these various diseases and things that are incurable, and Jesus Christ is healing every single one of them, you can't stop that from getting out. You can't stop that from being recorded. You can't stop the, the message the being spread. And, and the, literally the vast amount of people ultimately that ended up believing on Christ as a result. I mean, this was his, his ministry came forth not just with the Word of God. Now, if he had just the Word of God, it still would have been true. But God decided, you know what? I'm going to make sure there is not a shadow of a doubt here. The same way that, he, that when he used Moses. There is no shadow of doubt who the true God is. When he's bringing all the plagues down upon Egypt, when he's parting the Red Sea, when they're all going across on dry land, all of the works that he did. Look, this is, this is beyond you know, refute. Amen. It's irrefutable. Jesus Christ was even more so. You, know, you read back on all the things that happened during Moses' time. Jesus Christ did way, way, way more to just give all. The, if you are someone that requires evidence, Jesus Christ, here you go. He's healing. He's doing, you know, there, there's nothing else more. And that's why, you know, when, when the people said, and this is kind of a side note, it's not even in my notes, but You've heard about the, the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Ghost being the only unforgivable sin. You know, the Bible says, you know, he that blasphemy at the Holy Ghost shall have, the child never, hath never forgiveness. I believe it's in Mark chapter 3, actually. But um, that was in regards to Jesus Christ. Well, then, there it is. Yeah, in verse 23. Well, they accused him. Because Jesus Christ, was not, not only was he healing people, but he was casting out devils. Too. People were possessed with devils. And he was, he was casting them out. And... One of the people there was said in verse 22, it says, And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth the out devils. So they're seeing him doing great works. They're seeing him casting out devils. They're seeing him healing people. And they're saying, oh yeah, the only reason he's able to do that is because he's of the devil himself. 